You are now listening to Talk Your Jizz Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Talk Your Jits podcast. This podcast is, as the name implies, all about jujitsu. I'm your host, Lamar Smith. And today's guest is a blue belt who trains at Factory Fest Jiu-Jitsu located in Vancouver, British Columbia, and Valley Jiu-Jitsu located in Kamloops, British Columbia. Ladies and gentlemen, Manraj Kelsey. Hey, how's it going? Man, how is it going for you today, sir? It's going very good, man. Just uh, busy and training, you know, that life. Awesome, man. Awesome. But um, yeah, man. I first and foremost, I like to, you know, thank you for doing this, uh, doing this episode, man. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. No, well, thank you, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And this is actually my first podcast too, so um, I'm very excited to spend this time and talk about the thing that we love most in jujitsu, right? So. Uh. All right, man. So, yeah, the floor is yours, man. Just go ahead and give us a little rundown on, you know, how you started training, how you got into jiu-jitsu, and, and let's just rock it out. Yeah. So, I actually started back in 2019 before uh, before COVID, and that was I actually uh, trained out of uh, Gravity Jiu-Jitsu and their affiliate of Kairotera. Um, and that's where I trained and got all my degrees uh from for white belt so i trained there for about three years and then unfortunately covid hit and i uh i was just kind of off for about that time of covid and and during that time of covid it was uh it was was a struggle for a lot of people obviously because academy academies were shutting down yes and stuff like that right and everybody was just kind of it's it's to train again you know what i mean man and and I really, and I really want to give back to to my community, and because that's the type of person I grew up to be, um, and that's how I was raised uh, by a lot of my family members. It's like trying to give back. So I was really thinking, what can I do to really kind of give back to my team, um, at Gravity and the, and the boys, right, and to see what we can do and come up together. And during that time of uh of covid my uncle uh before covid hit my uncle actually had a a previous gym as well and he was doing that with his buddy um out in hope bc and that's a even smaller than Kamloops actually and that maybe have like i think their populations maybe i would say ten thousand, maybe more about that and so he, yeah, he had a gym, and he's uh, he's actually a black belt in kickboxing, and then he also likes to do a little bit of gi jujitsu as well. So um, that's where I kind of got that initial learning was from my uncle. Um, so what we did was actually he actually had uh, three by three puzzle piece mats, and then when COVID hit, he had to unfortunately shut down. So he came, he came up to me and he knew, he knew I trained. So he's like, you know what, do you, you want some of these mats? Because I actually don't know what to do with them. I was like, well, I don't know what to do with them. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I'm like, no one can really train. Right. right. So, I was, so I was like, you know what, let me, let me try to figure something out. And then I was, I was texting some of my buddies some of my training partners and, and I was like, you know what, let's, I know it's kind of against the law and we're breaking the rules and stuff, but I mean, like, let's kind of train and, and see what we, what we can come up with. Right. And like mm-hmm. we, I have an offer for all these mats. Right. And uh, so what we did was actually, I got a few training partners and we all invested in my uncle's mats. And then I put him in my basement and we had like our own little like jujitsu fight club in my basement. And we <laughs> nice. started rolling out of my basement, like in the midst of COVID. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and that was, and that was the best part too, because we were all doing what we love to do, but also like it was one of those things that nobody can be around each other, but it was also like we can finally be ourselves and, and talk, yeah. you know? And, and that was the thing that we loved about it most. Um, and just getting back and catching up with old buddies again, right? And and finally having that outlet that we always wanted to seek, right? So. Um, so I started at Gravity, and then during the mix of COVID, um, I wanted to learn 
I want to learn more leg locks because I noticed that's where the the no gi game and there is kind of money going into no gi currently as well. Yeah. Uh, so I really wanted to learn and refine my skills with leg locks and heel hooks and stuff like that. And mind you, I'm still a white belt at this time, right? Mm -hmm. So I know there's only so like I know there's a lot of academies out there that will only teach you so much especially if you're a white belt just because they're so weary of obviously people getting injured and and then they're not too sure how a white belt can really take a lot of the leg locks right, right. and a lot of these moves because they don't want to because everybody has those injuries of even a straight ankle lock like as soon as a white belt will put that on then they don't know how much strength they're actually using it's like a spazzy white belt right they're like oh, okay yeah. i got it i got a i got a foot man i'm gonna crank this thing right so mm -hmm. yeah. um so as a white belt, I I was really I wanted to up my game a lot more. So uh, one of my other buddies, he transferred. We started at Gravity, and then he also transferred to Factory Fresh now, and he's currently a purple belt. And uh, and so he was like, you know what? Come try it out, see what it's like, see if you like it, you know, and and see how it goes. And then at that time, I was trying to figure out my work schedule too because i was working evening shifts and my classes were at six o'clock mm -hmm. and then I, my shift wouldn't end until like nine o'clock right so and i would work weekends too so i could i couldn't even make it to open mat right and that was and that was an issue for me and then um refractory they do on tuesdays and thursdays they do 6 a.m classes so i'm like you know what that's perfect because I can wake up at 6 a.m., be at work for 8 30, 9 o'clock, right? And then make my way out. So I did a few classes. I really enjoyed the way my uh, my coach, uh, Ross Locke and Ab Siani, they teach. They, they're they both the owners of Factory Fresh. Okay. And um, and so they teach a lot of uh, new wave jujitsu and Gordon Ryan and Craig Jones and uh, a lot of theirs, and even Lachlan Giles as well. Uh, they teach a lot of their jujitsu and seeing where their leg lock games are going as well, um, especially from uh, looking at past ADCCs and seeing what Gordon Ryan does or Craig Jones and Lachlan Giles do, right? And yeah, just, uh, yeah. And see what we can mimic, mm -hmm. right? Um, so what that's kind of what... Uh, we're even trying to kind of go towards and push towards right now. Um, but as a white belt at that time, I would say maybe that's, I think it was 2020 at this time or 2021 um, where I was just like, you know what, let me, let me switch academies now and, and try to focus a little bit more on Nogi and a lot of, a lot more of my leg locks and see what I can do. Right. Mm -hmm. and, I'm not, and I'm a fairly big guy. Uh, I'm, I'm five, I'm 5'10", about 2'12", 2'15". Okay. So for me to like invert and, and do a bunch of these things and like X guard and single leg, sometimes it's hard for me because I can't get my hips off the ground because it's so <laughs> heavy, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's I like warm up my whole body like really good and then I can start to like roll properly. But other than that, like when 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 Ross is showing me a move and, and how to do like it from a – from a single X or an X guard to like a crab ride or something like that, I'd just be like, yeah, that's going to be pretty hard for me, my guy, because I can't really invert that well, you know right. what I mean? So, um, But he was really good with, with teaching me just very basic stuff from like a single X just to a heel hook or a straight ankle lock, right? And, um, and so that's kind of where uh, my love for that uh, really, really changed because um, I, I started with Gi and I still love the Gi. Um, that's that's never an issue. It just it's also when I first started um, the transition, and I don't know if a lot of other people kind of felt this way, but uh, the transition from gi to no gi, I felt like was a totally different sport. You yeah. know, and especially with the grips and and making sure that uh, because no gi is a lot more wrestling. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I didn't. I didn't know any wrestling. I had no idea. I had zero takedowns. I had no idea. And for me, I was like, you know what? Let me just pull guard. You know, see see what happens. You know, mm -hmm. and let me pull guard. And then now, um, I know we try to we try to practice a lot of wrestling now at Factory Fresh, and it's really good. And we're trying to uh, implement a lot of 
like I said, B team and new wave uh, jujitsu and, and their wrestling style. And um, when now, when I actually cross train between my bo- between both gyms. Um, I usually, so I actually don't live in Vancouver currently. I, I moved out and I currently work for the city of Kamloops, which is um, a smaller town with about 114,000 people that live there. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, have three, they have three gyms there uh, out in Kamloops and I'm at um, Valley Jiu-Jitsu and they're a PTT, so a Pacific Top Team affiliate. And there's... Uh, Pacific Top Team, there's BOA MMA, and there's also Rise Jiu-Jitsu and Westside Jiu-Jitsu, I believe. So there's four main academies that are out of uh, Kamloops right now. Wow, and they're I'm all very... It. Yeah, yeah, they're all very good. Um, and there's also a Judo Club, too, actually, out in Kamloops. So if anybody is um, from Vancouver and they want to go train... Um, out in Kamloops or something, there's very good schools that are out there that are willing to take you in for a drop-in or anything or an open mat, and they're really cool gyms, and they're all very technical. And um, what I really what I really appreciate that about uh, Valley is that, A, there were open arms, and um, Mike Lapierre, who's a, who's a coach that's out of uh, Valley Jiu-Jitsu, he was really cool with uh, with me training and, and coming to train out with them. And I've been there for about six months now. So, yeah, since May, I believe. And um, I've been in, and I've learned a lot uh, from Mike as well. And uh, what I found was that with Valley, with Valley Jiu Jitsu, there's um, they're very technical, which I really really appreciate because then. What I can do is I can drill a lot more of my technique, even just simple guard passing or whatever I need to do. And then I can bring that back to Factory Fresh and be like, okay, let me let me try to implement all this drilling that I just did throughout the week and, and try to implement it on some of these more advanced guys um, that I've known for so long and I know their game, right? So mm-hmm. that's kind of how that's kind of how I'm kind of cross training right now. Um, so I'm trying to take uh, the technique and all the drilling from Valley and I'll bring it back home and I'll try to drill it and, and use it on some of the higher belts um, at Factory Fresh right now. And um, and it's simp- and it's starting to work. It really is. And I've, and I've noticed my game has gone up just because I'm just drilling that much more. And, and like the saying goes, drillers make killers, right? The yeah. more you drill, the more you're going to get that technique done, right? Yeah. And, and it's so true. And, and one of the things is, is that um what am i one of my good friends he's actually his name is uh liam liam moss and if you look at if you look him up on uh, flow grappling he's he's won a few uh fight twins as well and he's won pan ams and worlds and uh, he's a very young kid and uh, he's a he's a brown belt i'm not too sure under who um but what he was telling me is that when he was training with mikey musumeshi for a bit and the uh, and the Mendez brothers as well. Mm, All, he okay. was, yeah, he, yeah. He was he was saying that they would just drill for like Mikey would drill for like six to seven hours a day, just drilling, right? And just using technique and start drilling. And then um, I'm not too sure if other people have listened to Mikey's podcast with Joe Rogan, but he was saying that like his drilling, he would just drill and keep drilling and making sure that he's got everything down. And he doesn't actually drill or um, even roll with competitors. He drills and rolls with hobbyists. And that's yeah. and that's the thing. He'll try to get in gaps, right? And so I've just tried to implement what she said and try to make sure, like, if I'm trying to use my technique right in that sense, mm-hmm. and then also and then I'll bring it back to Factory Fresh and see if it's actually working with higher competitors right and and making sure that i'm trying to get my technique right so right now my my training's kind of all over the place right now i'm currently at back home in vancouver so i've been training at factory fresh for the last week or so and so when i go back home on tuesday back to Kamloops, i'll be training at a valley and making sure that i get a lot of my drilling technique done okay okay so um 
a few things I wanted to, like I was kind of like taking notes um, while you were going because um, it's funny that me and my instructor was actually talking about like cross training and stuff like that yeah and it's surprising to hear schools like some schools don't allow that oh 100 percent yeah yeah and, and it's like are you like like what are you trying to hide like you know <laughs> I, I would feel like if I had a student that you know yeah. that was trained under me and yeah. they go somewhere else and learn something you yeah. there's you, there's no like limit to how much you can learn in jujitsu oh 100 so, and that's what i love about it yeah right? yeah right that's yeah and that's the thing it's like okay for example how i learned jujitsu or the a technique i might do you may know it but it might work a little bit different different than yours I'm not saying that mine is right yeah. or yours is right or vice versa yeah. but mm -hmm. i think that is I think everyone should do that and I think everyone should be open to cross training at different schools because you're able to pass on that knowledge or you might link up with someone at a totally different school that yeah. might help you in your game more than someone at your own school. Not to say like to go get oh, to go start recruiting other people, but yeah. it's it's just yeah. good to have those options. Oh, 100%. And I can't agree with you more. And for me like I I had no idea that Liam was actually rolling out of Kamloops at all, um, because he's like he's such a good jujitsu player, and it's so funny too because now him and I are really good friends. And then once he only weighs I think he weighs about the same as Mikey I think maybe like one one forty five one thirty five maybe I'm not too sure, mm -hmm. um, but man you can you can tell. Like the way someone drills or technique and how long they've been doing it for, and like when I was rolling with him the few times, I every single time I'd get beat, oh, 100 percent. And and that's but that's the thing that I loved about it though is because every single time I would get beat, he would always just pick me back up and then be like, hey, this is what you're doing. Uh, make sure you don't put your arm out this way or make sure you're closing your guard this way, right? It's the very small details that we all we all miss mm -hmm. right and that and that's one of the things i really really appreciate about cross training because other gyms and other people can look at your game and can kind of tweak it with you yeah. right and then see what you guys are doing wrong right and instead of like having the same people and then your buddies because once you start rolling with your buddies every other day or every day at the academy then you know what your guys' game plan is. You know exactly what they're good at and what they're not good at, mm -hmm. and you know what their game, what what their what their uh, what their holes are in their game, right? So, right. I I totally agree with you on that fact that some gyms they they don't like to do that. I'm not too sure why, maybe, um, but I know that sometimes there's like some gyms are some gyms are just kind of behind. Yeah, and and you do. And unfortunately, some, they don't really want to recognize that. Maybe sometimes they're in denial about that. Um, but I've, I feel blessed enough that to have two coaches that really, really encourage that. And, and Ross and Mike, they're very open with that. And, and Ross himself, he'll, he'll go to different gyms during open mat and he'll learn. Mm -hmm. he's, he's not afraid to open up. And same with Mike. They're not afraid to open up about their game and, and making sure that whatever they want to do, that they're winning, right? Because they're both competitors, and I know that for both of them, they just want to grow in this sport. Right. Same as every right. yeah, same as yeah. any other black belt or brown belt, right? They just want to grow in this sport, and then I think that's uh, that's the biggest thing, just to carry that in life too, right? Because if we're not learning something new every day, what like what's the point? you know what i mean and that's yeah. the thing right yeah and and for me like having both of them in my life and learning from mike and ross and and showing me like what i can do to be to be better that's that's like that's the beauty of jujitsu you know what i mean and just making oh, yeah. sure that you have that positive vibe around you all the time in a positive environment and majority a vast majority of jujitsu academies i've been to are so loving and caring and compassionate to anybody who walks through those doors because they know what it's like to be a white belt. Everybody mm -hmm. started the exact same. Yeah. Right. Everybody started at the end of that line. Right. And, and that's the thing that I really appreciate about jujitsu is because everybody's always treated the same. 
and and that's and that's the thing and everybody's willing to learn right yeah you're you're definitely you know you'll definitely be able to pick up a lot of stuff if you go in with that clear open mindset and just throw out everything you think you know about jujitsu out the door into you and train until you start training it yourself oh for sure yeah 100 percent. and and the thing the best thing too is that like for like for example you may just do the same like escape that's not working anymore and you're, and you're frustrated and then you go to like another academy and then they're like oh this is like another way to do it right and then it works mm-hmm. right? and then everybody has their own little quirks and a lot of their own little games right and they're and they're willing to share that and that's the beauty of it right because everybody wants to get better and everybody wants to see each other get better right you know what i mean and there's never any bad blood that's from what i've seen around different academies you know yeah and that's the best part too so and like i've always loved the idea of you know of cross training because i see it almost like you can almost see it as the business aspect of it too like if yeah. you go cross you know if you go to another school and they allow you to cross train and they're you know you like you say they welcome you loving arms and everything else treat you like they're you know you're one of the you know, when the students there, just say, for example, you go out and you meet someone who may see you with a jujitsu shirt or whatever, and you guys start yeah. that conversation. It's like, oh, I was thinking about getting into jujitsu too. It's like, oh, where you at? Blah, blah, blah. And if they say an area that you cross trained from, hey, I know a school over there. Wonderful school. Oh, you know, yep. these guys are awesome. I train there too. Drop my name yep. and blah, blah, blah. And it's just a, it's just a big cycle. Yeah, oh, yeah. 100%. And that's, and that's what I love about jujitsu too. Like for for me personally, when when I know like a really good school and they're and they're teaching very well, I want other people to go learn from them too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'll give them that business, right? And and a lot of and what I've noticed is that I I think I don't know if you if you notice this from different academies or not or, or from cross training or anybody else has noticed this, but a lot of good gyms, they will never ask in for a drop in fee because yep. they know because yep. they know how good they are and they know that they're pumping out really good athletes and really good competitors. So they'll never ask you for anything. They'll just show you what they know and the rest is history. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and, and I, always, and I encourage a lot of other, uh, a lot of other players just to kind of notice that when you're, when you're cross training or you're interested in going to another gym, uh, another academy, right? That you're not too familiar with, and you're just kind of heard by ear. Pay attention to that because a lot of these coaches, they they know what it's like to be in our shoes, and to be curious about jujitsu and to, and curious about gaining more experience, right? And they're willing to sell that for free. Yeah. You know, even if it's one class, but it's still for free, right? Because you're taking out your own time to go there, and to and to really study their technique and what they're doing to win right mm-hmm. and they're willing to teach you that and and that to me is priceless right knowledge is priceless right yeah and, and unless you go to college i mean everybody's in debt but other than that <laughs> like <laughs> right. you know what i mean like <laughs> but really good academies they they're willing just to to have you sit down with them and and then have one of their coaches teach and and i'm lucky enough to to have had that right mike mike has done that with me Ross has done that with me and um, a lot of um, other academies uh, such as um, Mike Kwan from from On Guard Jiu-Jitsu who is also out of uh, va- uh, out of Vancouver but Pit Meadows more specifically I don't know if a lot of people know where Pit Meadows is but it's uh, it's pretty close in the central area of um, of Surrey and Maple Ridge and, and all that right so there's just, there's a lot of a good academies that are are willing to take in new students and also willing to show them um, what they're coming up with, right? Yeah. Because proof is in the proof is in the pudding. Any coach that knows that, right, is is not egotistical and and they're not they're not just there to for a money grab, right? So and that's what you want, right? And mm-hmm. if any if any new white belts are, are listening or um, anybody who's curious of getting into jujitsu, just kind of look for that, you know, and and go go gym shopping right yeah, and yeah. see what you like and feel out the vibe man because at the end of the day it's a your money 
right? And it's your time, right? And and spend both of those things very wisely, right? And especially with the people that you want to hang out with, you right. know, because you always want a positive vibe. And and majority of people um, that I've personally come across with, um, they're really good with that, you know, and they're really generous with, with generous with people's time and people's money. So, yeah, and you know, with our school, you know you get a, like a week like you get like you know your first two classes is trial for free oh good yeah yeah yeah, yeah so, same here too yeah some 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 schools do like a week trial um i believe factory fresh does a week trial and i think valley does about a week trial or five days or something like that too mm-hmm. um but yeah but majority of academies they'll do a week trial just just because people are curious right so right and that's re- and, and that's really appreciative too yeah and it's like the the you know the, the few people that I've seen walk through our doors, um, I, I guess they they be so surprised to 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 like be in this type of atmosphere of of a humble school because yeah. like well you know they'll come in and they'll be looking all timid and nervous sitting on the side and like oh you you training. Like, oh, uh, yeah, 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 I'm thinking about it. I'll go over, like, you know, dap you up like we've been friends for so long. Like, come on the mats, man. Like, you know, you got to sit on the side. 100%. Like, come on yep. in. Like, come on in. If yeah. you want to learn, come learn. 100%. 100%. And I, and I can't agree with you more on that. And it's because everybody's been in that stage. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When, especially when they go to a new academy or even even a new gym in general, right? A lot of A lot of people are just weary. Right, yeah. weary about being judged and weary about all the looks that they might get, right? And then I'm like, dude, fuck that, you know? Like, who cares, right? right. If you're you're there for yourself mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you know what I mean? And and you're there to better yourself, right? And and those people are there to lift you up. And if they're not, and you get that back vibe that they're not, just then just dip, right? Yeah. And that that's how it is, right? You know? And and I always encourage people that. Um, Never, never be weary about where you want to train, and and people judging you. Right. You know, and and for a majority of the part, like jujitsu has always been like I'm going to quote Planet Fitness here, but a judgment free zone. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. But like, but that's from my experience. You know, and and I've seen and I've seen people. Um, just kind of sit in the corner and they're brand new to seeing people who I haven't seen before at the Academy. And like I said, and like you said, I'll just, I'll just dap them up and be like, Hey, how are you? Start a conversation. Right. Because you know what? Sometimes that's what, that's what all that, what people need, yeah. you know, there's just need someone to come up to them just to make them feel comfortable. Right. And, and just to start a conversation because they're in such a new environment and they don't know what to expect. Right. And especially if you go to uh, a competitive school and, and you see all these huge guys who are yeah. just wrestling, throwing each other around. That's pretty intimidating. Very. You know what I mean? And and it might not be intimidating for people who have trained for so many years, but it's definitely intimidating for all these new guys who who don't know like what a technique is, or they see huge, massive guys who are just literally just throwing themselves around and then give each other a big hug at the end of the round. You know what I mean? Like nothing really happened. Right, right. <laughs> you know, and and a lot of people are, are some people are weary of that, right? But I, I always encourage, especially if anybody's listening to us who, who are, like I said, are thinking about it, man, just just do it, you know, because you're not losing anything and you're not gaining anything. The only thing you are gonna gain is just that knowledge of that day that you went to the academy. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Like mm-hmm. you're 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 spending that time. Right. And, and the time is most valuable. Right. And the thing is, is like you're you're always bettering yourself. And I always tell my friends this too, like, just be patient with yourself. Yeah. And I always tell if if one of my friends comes up to me and they're like, oh, I want to get in shape. I want to do this. Or I want to do that. Um, I, I just tell them, then try jujitsu. Yeah. Right. Like it's I'm I'm, I'm here to help you. Right? I can I can I can help you and I can show you very very simple moves and like a guard break or what side control is th- things like that or even like a little bit of self defense right because I know that 
new people would like to do more self-defense and like more takedowns as well mm-hmm. um just because that's kind of what they see in the ufc right, right? and they, and they try to mimic that or they, they see, they'll see it in a movie right they'll see it in like john wick or something like that and they're like man i want to try that out that's a nice takedown this and that right and mm-hmm. and they want to try to mimic that but I always t- tell my friends, I was like, you know what, just just give yourself this chance to to really bring yourself together and to be patient with yourself, you yeah. know? And and that's kind of what one of my philosophies I try to use every day is this being patient with yourself. And when the time comes, it comes, man. You know what I mean? But it's only going to come when you, when you really give yourself that chance. Right. You know? And, and there's always, there's every excuse in the book. Oh, I'm too old. I have this injury. I have that injury. Um, oh, I want to lose weight before I do it. Dude, so many people have lost hundreds of hundreds of pounds just doing jujitsu. Yeah. You know, and it's fan, like, it's unbelievable, right? They get their life in order. And, and so many people, like, I know a lot of people who have gotten their life in order because they were just at rock bottom. Right, they've they they they've gone through a lot of addictions, and jujitsu really helped them out through the recovery, and and things like that. Right, so I always encourage people like never be afraid, just because you may think you're gonna get you may think you're gonna get judged. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, and, and jujitsu is never like that. And you know, you know I'm a you know I am a firm believer and prime example of that because when I started. When I started training, mm-hmm. um, I was roughly about two, about two eighty five. Wow! When I started, wow. when I actually started training jujitsu, I was going yeah. to the gym a little bit, but what really kicked it up was me going, you know, me starting jujitsu, and I got down to like, oh, I got to the two, like two forties. Good for you. And then, you, and then COVID hit. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens, bro. That's and, what happens, man. Dude, yep. And I was like, you know, you know, I was, you know, training a lot, you know, and everything yeah. else. But you know, my actually, yeah. like, you know, from white to blue, my weight was fluctuating. But when I really got to blue, that's when everything really started to melt off of me. And then yeah. boom, COVID hit, and like that whole that whole year was like, well, no, yeah, that whole like two years was crazy because I was. Yeah. Um, getting ready to test my purple belt. I just had a, you know, we just had our second, our second daughter and just, you know, just everything was just like in pandemonium. Yeah. And, oh yeah. But, yep. but yeah. And then fast forward to now, you know, I'm, you know, training more and more and more and, you know, my weight did go back up, but now I'm back down to like 217. Oh, good for you, man. So, and wow. pe- you know, people always ask like, you know, man, what have you been wow. doing? Yeah, I, I train. I train you too. Yeah, train, dude. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Like I'm a, I, I, I keep telling myself I'm gonna do this because usually, like on our Sundays, will be like our open mat, so we, you know, we roll hard and everything else. Like I want to just like videotape like the room after it gets done, like the floor and everyone yeah. just full of sweat and everyone is yeah. happy. But like, man, <laughs> you can't. Gym, man. It's you know, it's better than going to the gym. Yeah, and you like you. It's yeah. fun. It's exciting. It gives you know. It's it's it gives you so much mental clarity, and you're getting a hell of yep. a good workout behind it. One hundred percent. I can't I can't agree with you more, man. And and that's and congratulations on that, by the way. Because Thank you. That that's the that's such a hard step to do, you know. And and a lot of people are are really struggling with just a mental health and just mm-hmm. their physical health as well. Just right after right after COVID too, you know, and that's, and that's the biggest thing. And I can say that, um, I'm actually reading right now, uh, David Goggins first book. And Such I'm not too sure. Book. Right. And, and I'm not too sure if, if any of your listeners are familiar with David Goggins, but, um, just to kind of a little snippet of his bio, but he, he grew up from, uh, a really, really tough situation and, and his dad was actually very abusive very abusive, and he, yeah and he kind of carried that along with him and um throughout high school he was always trying to 
have that attention on him and be like, oh, I don't give a fuck, blah, blah, blah. But in reality, deep down, he knew. He knew, like, everybody, he wanted people's attention, right? And, yeah. And he was trying to get out of that even in high school. And and when it when it came down to SEALs, um, he wanted to he wanted to become a Navy SEAL, and he I think he was like, I don't I don't don't quote me on this, but I think he was like maybe close to like three hundred pounds or something like that. Yeah. What mm-hmm. he was saying, right? And and he walks in, and and the the SEAL guy, the recruiter, just kind of just denied him right away. And then after that, he was like, I really want to do this, and he ran. He just kept running, kept running, and then he had all these shin splints, broke both of his feet. Right. And but now he, he lost so much weight and he just he's an absolute monster, he's an absolute unit. And and coming back to like what what David said was that motivation at the end of the day is bullshit. And mm-hmm. and I kind of agree. I, I really kind of agree. Like it's it's just kind of a rush. You know, you see all these people on Instagram or on Facebook and they're just all these fitness stars and and they're doing all these workouts awesome you know and that's motivation right and they're motivating you to get better right and that's great but at the end of the day man motivation is a bit maybe like i would say one percent but the rest of that dude it's it's all discipline and consistent consistency yeah you know what i mean and for a lot of jujitsu athletes and and hopefully they agree with me on this but jujitsu is is all about con- consistency and discipline oh, you know you're 100 percent hundred percent. All about no no fucking motivation, man. Like you love this sport and ninety nine percent of jujitsu athletes will say that they fucking love the sport. Yeah. And that's and that's all it comes down to, you know what I mean? And and they're they're not driving on motivation. They're driving on discipline and consistency because they love it. Yeah. You know? And and that's what that's what they come back to every every class, you know, they're trying to get better and they're trying to be consistent with what they do. You know, and I encourage for anybody who's try who's out there trying to lose weight and trying to really better themselves, try not to focus on motivation. Try to focus on discipline and consistency because discipline that's what's and consistency. Yeah, yeah, because that's what's really going to get you through the hard times, and and to make sure that you're with it, man. You know, and anybody can motivate anybody, right? But it's up to you to really, really kind of. It's up to you to depend on yourself to yeah. be disciplined nobody can really everybody can kind of teach you how to be disciplined and kind of give you like a step-by-step guide but at the end of the day man that's that's up to you someone can show you the door but you're the one that has to walk through you that have door to walk through that door and, <laughs> you know what i mean you yeah. know, no one can slap you to a harness and start like hey walk through that door when you really don't want to do it mentally mm-hmm. you know and that mental factor really comes into play too right yeah so and so i i I really agree with you on that point. Man. Now, do you feel like, um, cause with me, like you were saying, like, yeah, it's, it's consistency. It's, you know, it's dedication. It's that commitment that you, you have, like, do you feel like, you know, once you started training in jujitsu, like, do you, do you feel like that helped you in your daily life to make decisions and commit to a lot of things that you wanted to do? Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. I, I really so for myself, um, a little bit about my culture and, and my ethnicity. Um, I'm born I'm born and raised in Surrey, BC or in Vancouver, BC. Um, but I'm I'm actually raised Indo Canadian, so um, I'm I'm Middle Eastern, so from East India. Okay. Um, and I and I'm raised as a as a Sikh or a Sikh, right? Mm-hmm. And what it means to actually be a Sikh it actually means to be a disciple or a student. Okay. And, in a of, and a lot of people actually get us confused by, by Hindus and especially Muslims because um, we look, we kind of look the same, right? Because we, we wrap turbans, we have a beard, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and coming and coming to your point where Jiu-Jitsu really helped me in, in, Sikh, in Sikhism, um, it's, a, it's a huge, it's a huge factor for us to be really mentally stable yeah um, and and to really focus on ourselves and focus on what we want to do to better ourselves and and make and make our minds more closer to the creator in that sense right Mm -hmm. and so to to really uh really help me with that and trying to get me back on track um 
in, in Sikhism, we're actually really big on meditation. And, and I meditate for at least 15 to 20 minutes a day currently. And I'm, I'm trying to get back up to about an hour a day. And, and, and jujitsu really helps me because at the end of the day, I, I, I try not to be a hypocrite um, when it comes to my spiritual path of that, right? And I look at like, hey, I, I can do two hours of jujitsu, no problem, right? But I, can, I can't sit without my phone right and meditate you know so there's what's what's kind of the issue there you know what i mean and and one of those things is that when it comes and it comes down to discipline right right when it comes down to consistency and for me it's one of those things that jujitsu really helped me kind of focus on that and focus on where i need to improve um spiritually and and with my mental health as well definitely and, definitely and and one of those things that um like jujitsu hasn't even like jujitsu has helped me with so many different things that it's just one of a few of my coping mechanisms. And for people who really want to get into jujitsu or are thinking about it, dude, jujitsu or any type of physical activity is a coping mechanism. Yeah, it really is. And it's one of those things that, like, for me, that's a coping. Jujitsu is a coping mechanism. I actually love to play with Legos, so I build Legos. That's a coping mechanism for myself. I like to really sit down and, and build Legos. Um, reading and, and meditating are like four coping mechanisms for myself, and Jiu-Jitsu kind of put that in perspective for me, right, as to what can I do to really um, shine more light on my spiritual path mm -hmm. and, and be and be your better um, sick. Right and be a better student, you know, and and that's what our holy scripture kind of says too is that when it's when it comes down to anything outside of um, like in being physical and, and having mental health, we can do it for hours a day, right? But yeah, can our can our mind sit? Yeah, you know, can we, can we sit without our phones? Can we? Can we really just spend that time to ourselves without our phone, without social media, and without our thoughts, essentially? Right. And, and, that's, and that's the biggest question. And so many people, um, what, I've, what I've recognized, even through my friends, too, is that people are bombarded by thoughts all the time. Yes, yes. And, and, that, and that's one of the biggest things. Right, and and a lot of that does come from PTSD. It comes from different traumatic areas that are very hard to control. And I and I know that I'm familiar with that depression as well. Um, and I'm not a doctor. Okay, I'm just some random dude. So, <laughs> <laughs> but this is I'm only and I'm only explaining from my experience. Yes. All right, my personal experience and what my friends have come to me with, uh -huh. and what I've helped them out with. Um, but what I've, what I've kind of noticed is that like a lot of people are just bombarded by their thoughts. Right. And some of my friends who aren't jujitsu, uh, jujitsu practitioners, I, I always kind of, my first question is, is what are you doing physically to help you out? Yeah. You know, because the release of endorphins is much needed for the body. And sometimes your body just is lethargic and it just needs to express itself in a different way. Mm -hmm. And just having that and having your mind focus on one task, focusing, focusing on something physical to do that's hard, that's sometimes all the body really needs to kind of reset, you know. And that's always my first question to anybody who really wants to either get into meditation or get into spirituality i'm like what are you doing physically first that kind of help you out mentally mm -hmm. and sometimes they just say nothing you know i'm like okay so i always suggest you know what if if you don't want to do anything hard and physical then go for a 10 minute walk every day yeah and see how you feel right and, and just take your time you know you can listen to an audio book you can listen to a podcast Right, but try to put your phone away and try to unplug for at least that 10 to 15 minutes, right? And then see how you feel. And then I'll try to check in with them at least once a week and then see how they're doing. And then we'll try to increase it from there. 
with the physical activity. And then after a few months, what I'll try to do is, um, if they are interested, then I'll then I'll share with them what I know about um, spirituality and, and meditation and what's really helped me on my path. Mm-hmm. And, and I'll try to share that with them to see if it will really help them, whether they're a seek or not. You know, because the for for Sikhism and for the spirituality, it's for everybody. It's just not meant for us, you know. And and that's the part of Sikhism is we're supposed to share, and that's um, that's what I love about it, and that's what I love about also jujitsu too, because a lot of practitioners they love to share their knowledge. Yes. Yeah. And and the most important part that I can really say about both. Sikhi and jujitsu is that the camaraderie. Mm-hmm. Um, if you ever, if you ever go to a Sikh temple, um, I encourage anybody to go to a Sikh temple, and to really try to figure out what what it's about. But if you ever go to a Sikh temple and you walk in, each Sikh temple on a Sunday or in the weekend, it's always going to be busy just because there's probably a program or uh, the congregation is there. But there's always going to be free food. You'll always find a hot meal or even water if you're thirsty. Go in um, and just cover your head, take off your shoes, and and you can just ask for a hot meal. You can sit there, and um, and you can have a hot meal. And there's if you go to a temple, everybody sits on the floor, mm-hmm. and that's because that actually represents equality. And our first guru, our first teacher, um, when he created this path what he wanted to do was show that everybody's equal um, whether you're rich or poor at that time we had there was a lot of emperors and kings um, and a lot of peasants who would come in together but he would have everybody sit on the floor and eat together because what happens is in this that camaraderie and you don't know who you're sitting beside mm-hmm. right that might be a peasant or that might be a king at that time and you start to talk as well Right, and that's what I love about jujitsu too. You never know what academy brings to you, and you never know who you're gonna meet. Whether you're black, white, Latina, right, things like that. You never know, and that's what I love about it because it's so diverse, and everybody loves each other at the end of the day, and everybody has the exact same goal of jujitsu: is just to get better and just to be better for themselves. Definitely, right? man. Definitely, I. I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more on that on that too cuz um I you know as a person who deals with you know anxiety and depression and you know I do go to therapy and I do try to meditate and stuff like that but you know it's nothing like jujitsu to like mm-hmm. you know to clear my mind and yeah um I was having this conversation with uh with my wife one day and um and I was just like talking to her about like you know friends of mine that's like you know they're you know they posting on facebook about you know they're just you know fed up they're tired they're going through this and this and this and that and and i'm like man it's it's just so crazy to me how people can just sit in this type of misery yeah and Mm -hmm. and it got to the point where it's like i was reaching out to them like hey dude i need you you know like what's what's going on oh you know this Mm -hmm. this and that this and that this and that all right, come train. Just come train with me. And they're yeah. like, "Oh man, you know, I I, I see that you be you be, you want to take on students, as, you know, you know, and all this stuff. I just can't afford it." I'm like, "I didn't tell you to pay. Yeah, just yeah. come, just come train. Yeah. Like, just come get yeah. your mind off that stuff, man. Because uh-huh. it's yeah. not going to do I'm nothing but just you know eat people. you alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like." You know, I'm I'm gonna call them out on it, but you know they still haven't you no know, showed up. But I, you know, I'm still I still poke that I still I still poke that sleeping bear. Like, hey, when you yep. gonna come train with me? Yeah. When you gonna come train with yep. me? Hundred percent. So yeah, and, and I think that that also comes from you caring though too. Because if yeah. you didn't care, you wouldn't you re- like you wouldn't really give a shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and that's what I and that's and I follow your steps as well. And I try to really encourage a lot of my friends who aren't interested or who are going through a bad time as well. I'm like, oh, just you know what? Come to the temple with me. Just do it once, right? And and see how you like it. And or just come train with me once, right? And just to get your mind off of it, because you know what? Sometimes that's all that 
that person needs. They, they need to be, sometimes they need to be around somebody instead of being in their own head. Yeah. Right. And, and that's what my, and one of my friends, he's, he's also going through, um, he's kind of going through therapy as well. And, um, and he, he actually took up running, but we, um, but we met through jujitsu, uh, when we first started and he was just kind of telling me one day that sometimes all he needed was just a hug. He's like, I was, he's like, I was so depressed that I just, I just needed to be around somebody and I just yeah. wanted to, wanted to be heard and, and acknowledged and it felt. And, and he's like, I just wanted a hug, man. And I was like, I'm like, that's what I'm here for, man. Like, it's like, it's not weird, dude. It's like, there's nothing weird about that. Like, you need a hug, man. You need a hug. And, and the biggest thing right now that's kind of changing, but um, it's still kind of stagnant too. I think it's kind of in a buffer zone is, is men's mental health, yeah. you know? And, and as someone who's felt anxiety and, and felt depression, before for a short period of time um thanking to god but for a short period of time like it sucked you know Mm -hmm. and and one of those things is that like right now it's it's very stigmatized you know And, and that's what i kind of really realized just talking to different people and that's what my friend right now is just trying to change and uh and he's he's currently actually running for um one of our legions out here and in, in men's mental health um and i'm just gonna plug him in real quick his name oh, is by all means his, please his name, is, his name is fashion yeah his name is fashion laddie um s-a-c-h-i-n-l-a-t-t-i and uh you can follow him on instagram um his name is satch in motion all one word and um, she's currently training to run across Canada in, in 2025. And he wants to be the first Indo-Canadian uh, sick to, to do it, right? And so he's trying to really follow into Terry Fox's footsteps and, and with that and trying to carry on his, his legacy, right? And, and to make sure that uh, he can fight for people's mental health and making sure it's aware. And actually, I think today's Sunday. Yeah, and he he just ran 80k today. And he every November, uh, he runs. So last year he ran 100k. If some of your listeners are from BC, he ran from Chilliwack to YVR uh, in about 15 hours. And Ooh, so he did my that. Goodness. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and he was with one of my other bar with one of my uh, training partners uh Margit and they they all the three of them they all did it together and so he that was his first really big thing he wanted to do for a very long time and um and so now today I, I think he might be finished I'm not too sure um but he ran from I believe from Chilliwack to New Westminster or Burnaby I believe uh but that was 80k and he was doing that today. So I think every year for him, it's just going to be one of those things. Uh, in November, he wants to make more aware uh, for for veterans with PTSD and for mental health. So please go follow him, guys. And, um, and he's a very, very good supporter. And uh, and if you guys have any other questions about that, like just feel free to message him because he's a very nice guy. He's a very open guy about what he does. And a lot of his also, and a lot of his motivation too comes from, or a lot of his discipline. I wouldn't say motivation, uh, but a lot of his discipline kind of follows uh, David Dawkins as well. And and he's he's a very uh, he's a very inspirational person, uh, also for myself because I I want to have that discipline in my life too. Definitely, and, and that definitely, you know, you know what I mean. And so I and I want to follow that. So he's he's like my he's like my bigger brother. He's like my mentor, right? And I and I love the guy to death. So yeah. So he's um so he's really really working hard for himself and um and that's and I wanna join him and I told him I really want to join him. I wanna join a positive team and that's what I'm kind of looking for in jujitsu and even out through life too, is just that positivity. 
you know, because yeah. there's so much, there's so much negativity out in the world, man, and there's so much hatred and, and racism and, and, and so much ignorance that goes on, and people just don't know, you know, and, and the thing is, is that people are so afraid of what they don't know about, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and, and, that, and that goes a long way too, right, because when, when you assume you're just making an ass out of yourself and me, right, right, and, th- and those assumptions can go a long way and they can definitely hurt people, you know? And yeah. uh, and it's one of those things where she's real and Satch really has taught me a whole lot of things too about that and about, and about growing especially. So yeah. I really, yeah, I, I, owe, I owe him a lot. And, you know, just to kind of like, you know, backtrack on what you were saying about, you know, mental health and everything. It's, you know, mental health is serious. It's a it's a very serious thing that should be looked at a little bit more thoroughly, a little bit more openly, and talked about more openly, especially in a lot of, you know, I, you know, I'm going to have to just say it, but, you know, in an Af- African-American community and a lot of other races that deal with it, too. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's serious. It's a serious thing. And, like, like you know, like you were saying, Getting into getting into some type of physical um, sport that can just you know get your mind off of whatever you're you know you're going through it's it's highly encouraged. We can yeah. speak you know we only can speak for jujitsu because that's what we do, and mm-hmm. I can't imagine like I would I can I can honestly say I wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation with you right now if it wasn't for jujitsu. Because of how mm-hmm. bad I was, I've been in in like in a mental state a couple years ago. I mean, even a couple years ago, just you know, as training. But it was around that time where I started taking jujitsu a lot more serious. Yeah, and it just it you know it changed my mindset a lot to like you know my wife contested this too. No matter what issues that we got going on, I look at it as a role. I yeah. I dissect it like okay what can we do here all right this mm-hmm. this and that boom 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 it may not necessarily you know help me find a solution right away but it just gives me that that option of like okay I have different options you know I have yeah. different ways I can look at it versus being oh it's just just the end all be all like no I can mm-hmm. you know get myself calm enough and it, that's that's why I especially go to classes roll my ass off like okay now that I got all that out the way. I can now focus on what I need to do. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I told you, and I, and I agree with you on the, on the aspect of, of having it, having mental health, uh, stigmatized in in a lot of cultures, because even for the Indo Canadian culture, it's a, it's a big thing too. Yeah. You know, and, and unfortunately drugs and alcohol are big things, you mm-hmm. know? And, and unfortunately those, those can be coping mechanisms uh, for a lot of Indo Canadians, and even in, in different cultures as well. Um, and, and that's the sad part uh, because I think for a lot of those people and a lot of those men, that's kind of all they kind of grew up with sometimes, right? And and some people might just say, "Hey, it's genetic." I'm like, "Dude, there's no way it's genetic." No, you know what I mean? And no, it's it's not. It's it's not genetic. Like you're you're making you're consciously making that choice to pick up that glass. Yeah, you know what I mean. And and that's that and that's the thing, right? And so I I agree with you on the point that it is stigmatized, and and I and I'm really trying to work on not making it stigmatized, especially in our community, um, just because I know that so many people. Uh, in the lower mainland, in Vancouver, a lot of Indo Canadians they, they struggle with that, right? Yeah. And and they don't know how to uh, how to let it go. Yeah. Or or have that outlet because they don't know how to talk. Yep. And they and they're afraid of talking just because they feel like they're gonna be weak. And they're gonna be and, judged. And they're gonna be judged, right? And that's and that's the thing. And I always tell people, I'm like, if if you're really thinking about that and you're thinking about being judged so much, then it's, you really have to look within yourself, you know, and you have to take out that time for yourself, right? Yeah. Because you, you really thinking about other people judging you, that comes from within yourself. 
you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And at the end of the day, you're gonna you have to kind of flip them off and be like, you know what? I'm doing my own thing. I'm not I'm not here on this planet to live for you. I'm here to live for me. Yeah, you only can live for yourself. And you can only live for yourself, man. You know what I mean? And and that's what I kind of tell people sometimes too, right? Like, oh, like it's not like for example, my mom might ask me something, right? And she's like, oh, what do you think about this person might think, right? I'm like listen, I don't, I don't wake up because of what they think. I don't right. care. Like, I don't care. You know what I mean? Their, their opinion like, is like a grain of salt. I don't care. Right. You know, and, and it's not going to make or break my opinion of anything else or, or think about what my next action is. Like, oh, think about what your next action is or what this person thinks of that. Like, who cares? You're doing it for yourself. Right. Yeah. And, and that's the biggest part too, you know? And so when it comes down to, stigmatizing and the, and the mental health and, and the depression and anxiety we i feel like like men in general have that in depression and anxiety because they may feel like they have to do so much to put on the table for the family and they have they want to be quote unquote the the main breadwinner and they want to do all these things right like, that's great money making money is fantastic you have to make money to live this world yeah you know what i mean but once you start surrounding yourself around that and and making money is all that i want to do right then you're going to lose people on the way yeah right and and that's and i've and i know a few people and they've been in that situation unfortunately where they that's all they kind of really think about like oh okay i gotta do this i gotta do this but i'm like hey what about your family you know, what about your kids and what about your wife? You got to take out time for them, right? And yeah. they work 12 hours, 14 hours a day and, and they're making all this money. I'm like, that's great, dude. Like you're making 100K a year, whatever it is, right? And, and you're building that time, right? And it, when it comes down to it, it's they, they may feel like they've kind of grown up in that hardworking mentality of just work, 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 work. And then they don't really realize how it affects other people around them, especially the one, their loved ones, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's, really, and that's a big, and I feel like, and honestly, that that's a big problem and big problem in the Indo Canadian community right now, because you'll see um, a lot of, a lot of Indo Canadians, um, they're truck drivers. And so they'll be, they'll be out of the house for a week tops. Right. And they'll never know what their kids are doing. Yeah. Right. And when they come back, all, all these kids have all these things, and the, and the dad or the parent might might buy all these things, right? And so what what I've kind of realized is that, and this is not the situation for a lot of families, but what I've kind of noticed, um, even in out high school and even now, is that when when you have somebody who's gone, whether it's a whether it's a mom or a dad. Um, and you only have a single parent there or even the grandparent taking care of the kids, right? That that role model or that discipline isn't going to be there because the kid can think whatever they want to do is okay, mm-hmm. you know? And, and without that discipline, because a lot of these, so for example, you'll you'll have a kid who's in high school and their, and their dad's a truck driver or he's working, right? He's just working in general. It doesn't have to be a truck driver. He's working in general and, and he barely sees his kid. Um, but when he sees his kid, he kind of gives his kid whatever he wants, right? And, and there's no repercussions. And, and the grandparents or the dad's parents live all together in one family. And what happens is, is that the grandparents don't know any English whatsoever. And they're kind of oblivious to what's going on with the kid. And sometimes the mom works or sometimes the mom's a stay-at-home mom and they're immigrants and they just kind of have no idea and in reality what happens is sometimes is that a lot of these kids kind of go down the wrong path because they don't really have that mentor or that male or female guide to really help them through and really kind of think things through mm-hmm. when it comes to a really so- a really good social group and when it comes down to that what happens is then that kid set, like then suddenly declines in school and then he starts to do all these different things right and then starts lying to his parents saying that everything's okay and then 
gets a, either gets ex, gets suspended or, or, or expelled from school, right? And then that's also hard on the parents too, you know. So that can also come from that mental health and also working all the time, yeah. You know, and yeah. and and I encourage anybody, and I encourage any father. I'm not a father. I'm very young, um, so I don't know. But this is only what I've seen. You know, and and what I've kind of seen through kids because I used to volunteer at my old high school and kind of seen how different generations of kids have grown up to be, mm-hmm. and and right now, man, it's like I'm like, holy shit, <laughs> I'm like I would never be able to survive high school right now. <laughs> I do. It's it's so crazy. That is so crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yes. I'm like. I'm like, yo, this is so nuts. I'm like, how you guys get away with so much stuff, right? Right. And but coming back to that mental health and, and kind of having working all the time and for example, having having that one parent bring in all the money, that's a tough on the parent too, because they think that I just I, I came all this way. I got my parents immigrated here. I immigrated here. Now it's time to work, 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 work. And and that's all it is. You know what I mean? And it's very hard to, when it comes down to it, it's very hard for them to mentally unplug from that because they just want to start creating more money and, and more asset and all these other things, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I firmly believe that once you start chasing money, it starts running away from you. Oh yeah. You know, and and one of those things is that, and for me, it's like I try not to do it. Like I maybe, for example, I'll apply for a job, right, and and it might be less money. I'm like, that's that's okay, right? I'm not I'm I'm not in it for the money. And and what I do right now as a career, I'm actually in law enforcement. So okay. Um, I'm not I'm not too sure if you guys have a what's what's called a bylaw officer um but i work for the city and what i do is i I work with a lot of uh transient people so a lot of homeless people and um, a lot of their encampments as well and making sure they have the resources that they need such as shelters and stuff like that um and i also do like parking tickets i issue those as well so very minimalistic things so anything to do with the city itself i i take care of um so as as law enforcement i i kind of i know what the what the mental aspect of a lot of things are because i've been through a lot mm-hmm. and and i know what other officers have been through and it's it's a very tough job and and it's one of those things where it comes back to is sometimes like, i'm like damn is this money really worth it you know for the for the stuff i do you know, <laughs> and right. that and that and that pops up sometimes, right? And it, and maybe some officers agree with that, like, hey, man, is my life really worth it? You know, and and that's one of those things where you kind of have to sometimes step back and really give yourself a reality check of like, hey, the money's great, but is my mental health worth it? Is right. all this PTSD? Is all this depression? worth the 100k the 200k whatever it is you know and and sometimes you just really need to step back and and take a break and and just be with your family shit join a jujitsu school take a few roles sign up you know and and bob's your uncle right so yeah um i it's one of those things where it comes down to kids and mental health and, and adults especially and men and mental health um it's it's such a huge factor you know because it's it's so stigmatized and especially in, in the canadian culture and i i really want to try to break that uh just because the more the more men we can get open about it the better off we are Definitely. right and not, Definitely. And not just men not and not just men teenagers women whoever it is you know what I mean? The more we're open about talking about it, the more we're able to set ourselves free. Yeah. At the and, end of the day. Right. And I'm gonna add this and then we're gonna wrap it up. Um Yeah. <laughs> but um yeah. yeah, you know, just talking about the whole mental health thing and um you know, like I said, you know, someone who as a person who deals with that and I you know, I am a father, I mean I'm a father of two girls 
and I got my daughter into training uh, jujitsu. Uh-huh. Nice. And recently, my wife finally, you know, we were finally able to get her back into training. Yeah. And I'm I'm telling you, anybody who's dealing with any type of mental like issues, mm-hmm. highly encourage you to go get help. Obviously. Um, you know, if it has to be a medical, by all means, go seek a therapist. Yep. There's so mm-hmm. many ways you can, you know, go by doing that nowadays. Um, yep. You don't even have to go to an office. You can either go online, download the app, and, you know, I think it's like Better Health is one. Um, and there's a couple yeah. other ones that's, you know, that does that. But yeah, man, get take up jujitsu. Hell, it don't necessarily have to be jujitsu. Jujitsu, yeah. karate. Whatever type of thing you can do physical to get that yeah. to get the, get that anger out, get that depression out, get that anxiety out, because yeah, especially with me and like with jujitsu, yeah, you can't you can't have that and roll. <laughs> like, you can't yeah, have no, that and roll no at the same time. No, no doubt, and I and I agree with you on that point, right? And it's it's so great, and the majority of people they don't even know. Like sometimes you just need an outlet. Yeah, you know. And sometimes just walking, right? Yeah, like just I mentioned, walking. Before, walking, walking is great because it's it's getting you started, and and yeah, you can use those Instagram or Facebook posts as, as motivation. But at the end of the day, man, it's about discipline and consistency, and and write that out and write out your goals of what you want to do, and and I and I do the same thing. I, I write out my goals of what I want to do and what I want to achieve. And, and I don't really, I try to do it within the week. I try not to extend more than a week. Um, just, yeah, just because a, I can. A little bit at a time. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit at a time, you know what I mean? And and once you're, and the thing is, is like, oh, I'm just walking. I'm like, dude, you're beating half the people that are sitting on that couch right now doing nothing. Doing jack squat. Doing jack squat, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. that's the thing, right? And, and you're beating those people right now, you know? And and it's really and it's it's unfortunate too because i feel like maybe one person wanted to do all those things right wanted to go to the gym and they're overweight and and they're struggling with all those things and, and the mental health and maybe one day they were they were judged you know unfortunately and yeah. then they're just immediately turned off yeah by it right and like oh i'm never going back oh i'm never going to do this or do that right and and unfortunately, sometimes that's how the world works, you know. And and like I said before, that people are afraid of what they don't know. And and that's that's the biggest part in the world right now, right? People are afraid. Yeah. And and, some, and and the majority of part people are afraid to express themselves, right? Just because they're worried about being judged. Yeah. But and you... I encourage I encourage any listener that never be afraid. Oh, love yourself, man. Yes. Love yourself before anybody else. And loving yourself is the hardest part. Once you know how to love yourself, man, shit, nothing can stop you. Yeah, love yourself and just, you know, reach out. Reach out and find that outlet. Yes, yes, yes. no, please. Please, definitely. If you're really struggling with that right now, please go reach out even to a friend initially. Be like, hey, this is what I'm thinking. Is this right? You know right. what I mean? And, right. and, they can, and they can hopefully guide you in the right spot. Right. And and never be afraid. Never be afraid to really think about and and talk to people. And because what happens is a lot of people think that they're only they're the only ones in the world going through those things. And And you're not. And you're not. You know what I mean? There's, There's billions of other people, literally billions. Right. Billions of people may be going through the exact same thing you're going through right now. And it's one of those things where you can change, but also change the people around you too. Yeah. Right. And so I encourage anybody who's maybe having negative thoughts, just go, go talk to a friend. But more importantly, once you're comfortable enough, seek that help, you know, and it takes time. Rome wasn't built in a day. Right. And neither, neither was your mind either, you know? Yeah. And, and that's and that's the hardest part, right? It's hard. It's about breaking bad habits, right? Our thoughts, our thoughts are habits. It's it's trying to trying to take over, right? So I encourage anybody who's struggling with that and struggling with anxiety and depression and mental health to to seek that help, right? There's so many different 
um, options out there. There's uh, suicide hotlines, like things like that, right? Yeah. And and just don't be afraid, man. Don't be afraid to be yourself. And that's what I can always tell people, right? So, but more more importantly, just go go seek that help. Talk to somebody because your closest friends are your closest friends for a reason, and they're not there to judge you. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Right. But yeah, man, I I definitely I definitely appreciate um, this conversation. <laughs> no, no, thank you, man. I I really appreciate you having me on here. And and hopefully we can we can start blowing this up pretty soon, you know, and and have more jujitsu practitioners talk about their story, and 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 learn from where they're from too, right? So thank you, thank you for your time, uh, Lamar. I really appreciate it, and um, and hopefully we can talk soon, man. Oh yeah, we definitely will, man. But um, yeah. that's the end of today's episode. I would like to thank my guest Manraj one more time for coming in and sharing his experience, and I hope you guys learned something from this. Because this was a very different episode than what we thought I thought it was going to be. But I'm definitely happy we <laughs> talked about this. But but please go and follow our uh, Facebook and Instagram page to stay up to date on all future episodes. This has been the Talk Your Jits podcast. Keep rolling. Keep grinding. And remember, long live jujitsu. Have a great day. Great day. Great day. <laughs>